and um, we've been working with a community of people doing FreeBSD development and basing products on FreeBSD to improve ZFS. Um, and always our, our goal is to push things back into FreeBSD. We, we've had a lot of experience um, with customizing things, and customizations are great, but they end up biting you in the end. And so we really want to, if we fix something, we want to get it pushed back upstream so that we're not managing the change, we're not managing the fix, it's in the product already that we're basing our product off of. And so we've been working with this team of, of people who are like-minded. Uh, how can we make ZFS on FreeBSD better and then get it back into FreeBSD so that we can all benefit from it as opposed to, well, here's we've got our private ZFS that doesn't work with your, and, and oh, but you've got an interesting change and we would like, oh, but it's a lot of work to, we'll just do it ourselves and, and try to avoid diverging it as much as possible. I think that's about all I have to say on the, in fact, I am at the end of my presentation. I'm at the end of my written notes. And I, uh, if you have any questions, I would be free to answer them at this time. I'm more than glad to. Are you going to show us how TreeNAS looks? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, the, the current FreeNAS is, is freely available, and you can just grab it and look at one. Um, in fact, actually, uh, we could do that right now. The uh, FreeNAS that's under development, um, I, I mentioned that writing the GUI was pretty hard. We change it almost daily. It was, it was breaking as I was showing the live one. Yeah, it, it's literally, the, the, we have a development instance up that the developers are using, and they're literally making changes to the code, and then, oh, look, that doesn't work now. And oh, that works now. This is what we're, uh, well, give me a minute here, and I can show you what we're trying to emulate. But um, as far as what's, what's coming, no. It would be a bad idea to show you something that, oh, look, a Django core dump. That's very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, to be honest with you, probably at this point, if you're, if the only thing you're interested in is running ZFS, probably running ZFS on Solaris is a better bet. It, it's going to be more stable, um, and if that's all you care about, uh, they're ahead of they're ahead of FreeBSD in that regards. So where FreeBSD becomes attractive is in its licensing. In you know, in a lot of meta issues that surround it, and some of the things that are problems in ZFS. For instance, about three months ago, four months ago, I have a I have a big file server at work, and we have has a RAID controller in it, hardware RAID controller, and so we have it split up into two LUNs, and it has a boot LUN, and then it has a big storage LUN, and so the boot LUN is like 100 gigs, and the storage LUN is five or six terabytes or something like that. And uh, the hardware RAID controller had a failure. And it locked up the system and started scrolling a bunch of it. So we rebooted the system. It came back. The UFS file system had to f -sick. Um ZFS just, yeah, yeah, hey, I am here. It worked just fine. About two minutes later, it had another failure, and the RAID controller totally died. And the system wouldn't you know, just hang at initializing the RAID controller, and the system wouldn't boot. We replaced the RAID controller and uh, booted the system. And the UFS file system, oh, I need to FSIC again, and it did. And the ZFS file system locked up the system. And uh, we went, oh, that's unfortunate. And so we tried it again, locked up the system again. And after about five or six tries, we decided we got sick of the system locking up, and we recreated the ZFS file system. Now, it turns out that that particular problem would have been an issue on Solaris or FreeBSD alike. Uh, the journal got munched, and there was no way to recover from it. But um, is that, you know, are there edge cases where Solaris would have done a better job than FreeBSD of recovering from something like that? Probably. So, especially as, you know, as the newer versions are getting pushed into, uh, well, it was open Solaris and now it's a Luma OS or something. I, I haven't quite kept up with that. But, you know, FreeBSD is still on ZFS version 15 is the 
is the, you know, if you could go with the development version of 8, there's experimental patches to get up to V24 or something like that, but it requires free, uh, FreeBSD had a, a development, development version of FreeBSD, and they're experimental patches and they come with big warnings of don't do this in production and stuff like that. So um, from a terms of trying to use it as both an open source and a, you know, commercial uh, product, the licensing becomes very attractive in FreeBSD. Um, in terms of some of the other things it's capable of, you know, the broad range of hardware support, um, some vendor support for some, you know, things like LSI RAID controllers, Eureka RAID controllers, then it becomes more attractive. But from a strictly ZFS standpoint, if that's all you're comparing about, probably there isn't an advantage. So. Besides the grid, what does VNAS have that um, We're trying to keep that down to uh, as little as possible. It, as much as possible, if we're running into issues that are things that are problems with FreeBSD, we're pushing them upstream. Several of the members of this project are very senior FreeBSD developers as well. And so as much as possible, we're trying to get those changes back into FreeBSD. For the most part, um, in the in the publicly available just you know free NAS project as we're doing it, hopefully there'll be none. Hopefully there'll be no changes between it. If we ever decide that you know we want to do a commercially supported version, there'll probably be some changes from that. And just because if nothing else, FreeBC development, I don't know if you're any aware of it at all, but it's somewhat glacial. It, it's very it's very conservative, and they have a code base that's you know pushing 30 years old right now. And when you start saying I want to change this, you get lots of why. Why would we change anything? You know, this has worked for 20 years. Don't. And so it can be hard to push changes back into it unless there's an immediate. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is very clearly a benefit for everybody. So, yes, sir. There were more questions back there. Yes, sir. CFS warnings aside, do you all support CFS and um, I don't remember if that's in version 14 or not. I th yes, it is. Yeah, it's FreeBSD 14 or ZFS version 14. So ZFS supports it. We haven't put it into the GUI yet. And um, what we're, we're struggling and working as hard as we can to not lose any features that are in the current FreeNAS. And so things that the current FreeNAS doesn't have are being deprioritized in terms of those features. So probably the release version, in fact, I'm almost certain the release version won't have any sort of GUI hookup for ZFS send and receive, but it's on the, of course, it's a very attractive thing that, hey, we have this, let's hook it up. So. Yes, sir. You depend upon uniform API or rate controller? I'm sorry? The uniform API for eight controllers? Is it's, it just a thought or? It's, it's one of those, that would be really nice kind of thoughts that I have taking a shower every once in a while. It's not, not realistic at all. There's way too many players and some of them are way too big. You know, you go to LSI, it's like you get lost walking in the front door, let alone figure out who you have to talk to, to say, hey, can we, uh, and they would go, why would we do that again? Oh, for interoperability with, uh, with our competitors that we're already crushing? No, thanks. Have a nice day. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. But yeah, I think about those kind of things. Yes, and so we, have, we have to write the rate management GUI portion per... Uh, per controller, and, yeah. And so promise, of course, they, they've been willing to talk to us. And I'm sure High Point, I'm sure May would, would help us out. Sure. And, uh, you know, there'll be some other guys, but then we have to write a separate module for each vendor and it becomes difficult to support. And so I think what we'll do is end up saying, you know, hey, this hardware, if you get this, yes, we have plugins for that to manage it straight from the web GUI. Otherwise, you know, use your regular tools from the command line. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm curious, what's your interaction between using ZFS on top of the hardware rate controller? I mean, we're using basically dumb SAS controllers because ZFS wants to yeah, we've um, we've had some mixed results with that. In some cases, we've had really good performance out of it. Um, I, I know of somebody who's can't really talk about who it is, but they're seeing a gigabyte a second 
off of ZFS and a hardware RAID solution. And we haven't been able to push software, you know, RAID Z anywhere even in the ballpark. And so, so when performance becomes, we really, really, really want this to perform, it, it becomes attractive. From a, from a, you know, I have four SATA disks or four SAS disks plugged into my home system, and then, then RAID Z is, is incredibly attractive because uh, the data integrity issues that it solves, there's no RAID 5 write hole, you know, there's, there's lots of compelling reasons to use that. And so it, it sort of depends on where your use case is. You know, it, it, it's sort of a, a joke, excuse me, but I, I like to joke that if you need really stable, slow storage, then RAID Z is, is really the way to go. And, and by slow, I mean, oh, it won't quite saturate quad Ethernet, you know, quad giggy. Um, but if you really need it to fly, then you start looking for other solutions and, and that very quickly becomes, well, I'm going to you know, export a, my RAID 6 as a device and then put ZFS on it. And so for some cases, I have a couple boxes like that and it's nice that my file server at work doesn't take an hour and a half to FSEC and, and it just comes back up and I have ZFS on it, but it's also nice that you know, it'll do 600 megs a second when I want it to, so. Uh, yesterday